Welcome back to the Nuggets of Gold podcast and YouTube channel. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now we're going to have two episodes coming out today. Yesterday, we didn't end up posting. We're recording this late Tuesday night, so didn't want to post something super late. But for this segment, we're going to be talking about the Packers-Lions game, the Seahawks game, and the Cardinals game, just because we wanted to talk about like what's going on in the league, how do these other teams look. Now, obviously, the Niners are going to be playing the Packers this week, and the Niners already played the Lions, so it's interesting when you see like a team that you've played, that you're about to play, play against the team that you just played right before. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to see like what, what do they look like. Um, and then in terms of the Seahawks and the Cardinals, both were in very, very close games. Both of them looked like at one point, like probably right around halftime, that they were going to run away with the game early. Ended up coming back. Uh, the Seahawks kind of lost their lead, but really interesting games there. So we'll talk about all that. But let's start with this this Packers-Lions game. Monday Night Football was a massive line. Game starts out, and the Lions are hanging in there. I was really surprised early on. Now, as the game goes on, the Rodgers to Adams combo starts heating up. Aaron Jones has a monster performance, and the Packers offense kind of steamrolls the Lions at the end. But it definitely wasn't like just a do- like an overall dominant performance by the Packers. So, Aiden, you know, the Niners are about to be playing the Packers. What did you think when you were watching that football game? Uh, I thought it was really interesting. The Packers came off with a slow start. Uh, we saw in, in the Niners Lions game, the Niners were able to get on them relatively quick, which we haven't seen all the time during, during the Shanahan tenure. So that was really good to see. And that was something the Packers were not able to do. Um, however, they finished strong the way the Niners did not finish strong and ended up winning by 18 when I think the Niners won by eight. Um, so, I mean, I, watching the game, the Packers did not blow me away. The Niners have had the Packers number, especially on the defensive end, um, for the past three, four years. Um, I feel like Kyle and, and this defensive staff knows exactly what LaFleur wants to do. Um, Aaron Jones had three receiving touchdowns on six catches, which is not very sustainable. Um, he was playing with a heavy heart, which, which was a really cool story. Um, but I think the Packers looked, looked beatable. They didn't, they, they looked better than, than they did in in week one where they got destroyed by the saints. Um, but you knew that, that that was probably going to happen. Rogers was going to have two career worst performances, uh, back to back, but he had five incomplete passes and four touchdowns. Um, so he's back to what he's supposed to be doing is super excited for this Niners Packers game, but I'm, I'm not excited. And I don't think that, that they can stop the run game. The, the one throw that I was just completely amazed by was the 50-yarder uh, to, to Devontae because that ball was maybe like 45 yards from the, you know, from the line of scrimmage to Devontae. And then you add in like, all right, he's throwing that ball on the sideline. He's in the middle of the field. And he's like 10 yards, 8 yards back from the pocket. That ball was absolutely rifled. And it was literally put in the perfect spot. So, yes, Aaron Rodgers, he's going to do Aaron Rodgers stuff. But I don't think that's what, like, when you look at this game, I don't think that's the flaws of the Packers. I think when you watch, you're like, okay, Kevin King's still getting toasted by, was it Cephas? Um, like, on that first drive, that was brutal. Um, they, like, their defense is all right. Like, their their defense is okay. But it, it's, it's looked beatable for, like, three years. And at the end of the day, that's been, that's what I felt has been the Achilles heel of this team. Um, most of the run defense, though. Still question marks there. The offensive line, it definitely looks like it took a couple steps back from last year. Now, Bacchiardi's out, so when he comes back, that's going to be a big win for them. But they also lost Corey Lindsley, um, and so it's going to be it's going to be a tough tough spot for the Packers being this year. I don't think they're quite as good as the last couple years. Now, time will tell. It's been two weeks. We were talking about this like early on the season. Everyone wants to freak out, like. Oh, two weeks in, like this is what how everyone is. Like, it's calmed down, especially after week one, because week one, like, there's so many flukes in that. Um, so the Packers could consistently get better. There, there's a lot of new faces, so that also would make sense for a little bit of a slow start. Um, but they came back, they got the job done. In the NFL, that's all you can ask for. Um, one thing I do want to say is, even though the Lions start out zero and two, their offenses actually look pretty good. Like, and they didn't score a ton at the beginning against the Niners, but Jared Goff's actually like. He's going to put up numbers this year on the Lions, and it's going to be interesting because, I mean, everyone rips him so much. But at the end of the day, like he's going to have a pretty good statistical season. So 
it, it'll be something to, to kind of look back on. Oh, wow, Goff threw for, for 4,500 yards? Really? Um, but overall, <clears throat> don't think there was a ton of takeaways from that game besides Packers got the job done. They're still gelling, and it does look at this point like there might be a few holes on that defense. And also, the offensive line might take a while to get going as well and, and take a while to gel. Um, going into the uh, the Seahawks game, the Seahawks, the Russell Wilson to Tyler Lockett combo was absolutely dominant. Um, early on that game, the Seahawks defensive line was making some big plays on Tannehill. They were balling up Henry pretty good. And then uh, King Henry took over in the second half. If any of you, I did. I had him in fantasy. I was pretty much guaranteed to lose that game and going into the second half. And Henry completely took over my team. So thank you to Derrick Henry, not only for, for helping me win a fantasy game, but also helping the Seahawks lose. That was great to see. Um, I also wouldn't put a ton of stock into this. There's a very good chance when the Niners meet Derrick Henry, I think it's in December, that he could put up a game like this. And I get that the Niners defense is really good, and it, it's, it's a lot better than the Seahawks, but it's still Derrick Henry, and sometimes this dude is just unstoppable. So he looked on fire in the second half. Um, the The Seahawks offense looks a lot better, though. The defensive line looks a little bit better than I kind of thought coming into this year. Um, saw a few flash plays from some of the guys there. I saw Kerry Hyder in the backfield a few times, actually, so familiar face. Um, but what did you think about the Seahawks performance? Yeah, I think you, you hit it right on the head. Um, they looked good in the first half. They had a big lead. I think it was like... 24 to six or something like that. I don't even think the, the Titans had a touchdown. Um, and then the, the game completely flipped off of um, Derek Henry, just as you mentioned, they could not stop the run. He was getting, he had a couple like longer runs, but like he, they were just beating them physically, um, which is almost more demoralizing as a defense than he breaks off three 60 yard runs or something like that. Um, and we saw that in, in, in overtime he had, I mean, they, they were basically done at that point. Um, right, right before we got on here, Matt and I were, were going off the, the Seahawks defensive line and it's not particularly scary dudes. Uh, we were at the Eagles game this past weekend for, for the Niners. And I was really impressed with, with their defensive line. Um, and I am not impressed with what I saw out of Seattle. Uh, I think that, the Niners are going to be able to control the the line of scrimmage, which is how they won the first two games, and that's their recipe for for success, both on the offensive and and the defensive end. Um, I don't think the Seahawks are as good as they have been in in previous years, but I mean they're going to end up winning nine, ten games because Russell Wilson is so good and and their receivers are so good, um, and they're going to put up points and their defense is is going to get progressively a little bit better. Um, I just don't think that they have the firepower on the defensive line. They really just have Bobby Wagner in 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 the linebacking core, and Jamal Adams is basically just a linebacker. So uh, we will we will see how they they do on the back end, but their their defense did not impress me. I don't know if I told you this, but there was this play in Week One, and Grant the Seahawks did looked really really good in Week One against the Colts. Now the Colts were banged up, but there was a play, and it's it's not like this is Jamal Adams' fault, but he came blitzing like off the edge. And right where he would usually be in that strong safety spot, they threw the ball right to him and they scored a touch. The Colts scored a touchdown. I was just like, well, this is what happens when you bring your safety down in the box every single time on third down. Because last year, I think it caught some people off guard, but that's not a sustainable way to win, especially if you have a team that picks up their assignments at the line of scrimmage. And if there's a blitz and the quarterback can recognize that quickly, it's going to be tough to, to win that way on the defensive side of the football. Um, so definitely something to point out there. Uh, another team that I thought this game was just like shot after shot after shot. The Vikings Cardinals game, that is a prime example of two uh, cornerback rooms that are not, not performing well. Now, if you look at the Vikings corners, you're like, oh, these guys are pretty good. The problem is Mike Zimmer's, Zimmer's scheme. It's fantastic when you have Xavier Rhodes in his prime and he's locking guys up, but he asks so much out of his corners, and it's just not going to work with Pat P anymore. Like, I'm sorry that's not going to work. But in this game, like, on the Cardinal side, on the Viking side, just burnt coverage after burnt coverage. It was just huge play after huge play. Um, unfortunately for the Vikings, they kind of did what 
they've done throughout the history of their uh, their franchise, missed the game-winning field goal. But I think after that dominant performance um, from the Cardinals week one, they came back down to earth a little bit. Now, I still think they're a very scary team with with Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt on that defensive line. Uh, Buda Baker is in the uh, is in the secondary as well. But, you know, this is going to be – it's going to be an interesting team because I think they have a lot of really bright spots. Kyler is an amazing player, and we saw that too. But – I don't know how go- I don't know how good they're going to be able to go, and if they have a couple injuries like a Chandler Jones, JJ Watt, Buda Baker, it gets really scary for them because they're pretty top heavy. But their top guys, like their elite guys, are best of the best in the league. But it's just going to be hard to t- like how how will they recover if they have some injuries? So I think the the verdict's still a little bit out on them, but for them they survived because they probably shouldn't have won that game. Yeah, I think that that's the mark of a good team. Uh, that's what we saw from from the Niners this weekend. They won a game that they potentially should not have won. Um, they made plays when they needed to. Uh, the Cardinals did let Kirk Cousins go for 250 and, and, and three touchdowns on their head, which, I mean, Kyle loves, loves Kirk Cousins. A lot of other people do not. Um, I think, I mean... He's okay, but I think the the Cardinals are severely limited by their coaching staff. Um, like like you said, they have some of the brightest stars in the league. I think Kyler is an amazing quarterback. He's an MVP candidate right now. Uh, the things he can do with his arm and his legs are just insane. Um, but I think that they're they're limited in their play calling and their coaching staff. Um, and I think you're going to see them get progressively. I think that that they're a year or, or two away on the defensive end, um, but they have the offensive stars right now. Chase Edmonds looked really, really good. He was a guy that I was pretty low on going into the season. Um, he's been really, really good over the past two weeks. He, he, he may not have the, the numbers or the eye-popping stats, um, but he, he made a couple plays that I saw that were like, okay, that was pretty impressive. Um, so they have dudes. I just don't like this is a very similar team than the one that walked into um, week 17 last year against the Niners with a playoff spot on the line and they were not able to get it done. So until I see them beat a quality opponent in a game where they need to win, um, I I'm, I'm not going to trust it, but they've been the most impressive team other than, than the Rams for me in this division. I think I'm more, apprehensive to play them than than the seahawks because i know how we're going to beat the seahawks um cardinals have a good defensive line but like you said one one injury in there and um some major question mark town um so super interesting but i think right now in the division i would be confident in in the niners beating cardinals seahawks rams i think is a toss-up i think kyle has mcveigh's number a little bit um but I mean, Kyler is just so dang good. I, I don't want to bet against that guy. Yeah, I'm with you there. He's dude. He's a very, very scary player. Also, their wide receiver room did get a lot better. I feel like, and then of course, adding JJ Watt. I don't know how that flies under the radar because, like you're saying, in that Week 16 game where, and that was the game where Fred had some monster plays and really took over. Uh, they just couldn't get it done. Now, to be fair to them, Kyler was a little banged up late in the year too, if you remember. Um, but they, I mean, they absolutely should have beat that 49ers team. Like, you got to get it done in that situation, especially with, you know, playoff hopes on the line. Uh, but this team, adding J.J. Watt, who it seems like everyone's like, oh, yeah, like J.J. Watt, whatever. Guys, J.J. Watt is still really good. The problem isn't when he's on the field. It's when he, it's that he's missing so many games for the last few years. When he's on the field, he still balls out. So, yeah, very, very scary player to go against. And when the 49ers meet the Cardinals – expect him to tear up that interior of the offensive line because that's just what he does. Um, but that's going to do it for today's episode. Later today, we're also going to have an episode out about are the 49ers Super Bowl contenders. So if you're not subscribed and you want to check that out, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're bringing 49ers content all the time. Now, today, this episode's a little bit different, but it's still about the 49ers. So um, a little bit different episode, though. But 49ers talking about, you know, are they Super Bowl contenders? That'll be up next. So thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you very soon.